talk about the milling machine. After converting it to CNC operation last year, it quickly became obvious that chip evacuation was going to be a problem that needed to be solved. As a quick and simple project, one I didn't really take video of, I added an air blast setup. This is basically two aluminum blocks to act as manifolds with a lock line nozzle and a ball valve and an air regulator. This in and of itself actually helped quite a bit in getting the chips out of the way, especially in aluminum. Cut quality overall improved and the tool could really do its thing far easier without getting clogged up with chips and crap. Made quite the mess, too. I knew ultimately I wanted to add coolant into this setup in the form of a mist. I could start with my existing manifold blocks and add in a second line between them to a pressurized vessel full of coolant. The line full of plain air and the line full of pressurized coolant would then reconvene at the nozzle and be adjusted with a couple of needle valves to balance pressure, mixture, and volume. Now of course there's a lot of discussions and opinions on different types of coolant setups and existing products on the market, but that's nah, not this video, so sorry. This project is of course something that was inspired by other creators and machinists, and I'll point out some great influences I got, such as the idea I got from Chris DePrisco, the use of an inline water filter holder for the pressure vessel. Now the great thing about using one of these is that they're available inexpensively at any big box store, they're stout and pressure rated, and they're ready to be easily plumbed in with just a couple of three-quarter inch fittings. You can even find transparent ones online. There's a link in the description. Now all I need to do here is adapt one side of the container to accept quarter inch tubing coming from my air manifold, and then on the other side I'll create an output straw that goes to the other side eventually mixing with the air. For all the fittings for my quarter inch tube, I try to get them in the threaded eighth inch male pipe threads because those are the easiest for me to cut and tap into my manifold blocks. On the first manifold block, which I'll just call the regulator block, I simply drilled a hole to intersect the existing air pathway and then I added a 90 degree tube fitting. I also removed the ball valve from this block to move it to the other one. I'll call this one the head manifold and I did the same thing adding another 90 degree needle valve. I just used a series of off-the-shelf adapters to fit the quarter-inch tubing to the incoming side of the pressure vessel. For the exit side of the pressure vessel, I drilled a quarter-inch clearance hole into a PVC pipe plug for the tube to slide through, and this will put the opening at the bottom of the container. I can then lock the tube to the plug with some epoxy and silicone. I could easily hang the pressure vessel off of the side of the milling machine's stand with a couple of screws, which is another nice feature of using this. The manifolds were also remounted and all of the fittings were then attached. There was an existing threaded hole on the side of the head I took advantage of for mounting the head manifold. This made for a small clearance issue with one of the needle valves. I had to shorten the arms of the T-handle just a little bit. Keen viewers may notice the spindle control box is no longer mounted to the head of the machine. I'll show more of that in the future. I want to discuss some of the control tweaks and upgrades I'm currently working on. I had originally tried 3D printing one of those cable chains all the cool CNC machines have to tidy up the air and electrical lines coming off of the head, but it didn't hold up to the stiffness, so I just used a basic cable management tube. The coolant I'm trying out with this setup is QualiChem 251, and you can get just a gallon of it from Tormach. It doesn't stink too bad, and you mix it at a 5% ratio. Actually, I think in this shot I'm mixing this batch at a 10% ratio because I miscalculated. You could certainly set up an electronic valve to be turned on and off by your controller, but I like this manual ball valve. The first test of this showed a lot of output. This is great. I can adjust down from here. 
Fans of the channel caught a glimpse of this in action while machining a faceplate for my homemade heat treating oven. This was in another video, and go check that out. I'd call it a successful first run. Mostly. For a number of reasons, this particular part was about a 15 minute cycle time, and yes, I know absolutely I could have shortened that, but we'll get into that in another video. The real point here is that the 1-ish quart capacity of my pressure vessel meant that I did end up running out of coolant about 12 minutes in, and that led to the last cuts being done with just air blast. This isn't catastrophic, but it did present some issues with this particular setup. So, I think it's time to discuss the original inspiration for this project, coming from a small channel run by a guy named Tom. Yes, Tom Lipton, aka Ox Tools, and if you haven't heard of him, you really should have. You see, Tom did this project years ago and used a 2 liter soda bottle for his pressure vessel. It's absolutely f***ing genius. According to him, the bottle can take a pretty good amount of pressure, far greater than my needs, and the brilliant part is that one could have pre-mixed bottles of coolant ready to change out during an operation. It's great because soda bottles are essentially free and have over twice the capacity of the water filter container. The big hurdle for me to overcome here, of course, was to figure out the soda bottle's thread. I actually stumbled my way into this a couple of weeks ago. I was farting around making a little aluminum lightsaber hilt for a neighbor kid's birthday. We found a plastic tube laying around that made the perfect blade, but the only way to attach it was to cut these kinds of threads. This gave me the confidence to give this system a try. The nitty gritty with the soda bottle threads is that they're 8 TPI. They have a minor diameter of about 0.975 inches, and the thread profile is narrower than that of a 60 degree thread. I ground my own internal threading tool out of a high speed steel blank. This is actually one I had made for normal internal threads some time ago, but I modified it for this apparition. I ground as much clearance into the neck of it as I could to allow for the depth of the threads, and thinking that I could be clever, I left the front of the tool flat. I thought it would be helpful in the blind hole. It actually just led to a little bit of chatter, but wasn't really a huge deal. I happen to have the perfect piece of aluminum stock for this. So I laid out and center punched my hole position to make it easier to set up in the four jaw chuck in the lathe. The hole position wasn't highly critical, I could just use a live center in the tail stock of the lathe to get it lined up where I wanted to. By the time I got to boring the hole with larger drills, it became obvious that the stock wasn't sitting flat in the chuck, so I adjusted that with a little bit of gentle precision. Even though this adjustment moved my existing hole just out of concentricity, I now had the clearance to come in with a boring bar and fix that, as well as get my hole to the minor diameter. I have this obsession, you see, with the power crossfeed on my South Bend lathe. So of course, I had to face off this part. Not only was this not necessary, it took a hilarious amount of time. But, oh well, gotta love it. The first step I'm taking in this threading procedure is to cut a little relief groove at the bottom of the hole. I'm just using my threading tool here. This is going to create a little gutter for me to be able to stop the tool during the power feed of the threading operation. And then when the part's actually in use, it'll be a good spot for an o-ring to sit. The actual threading is done in a fairly standard fashion. It's an internal thread in a blind hole, which adds a little bit of complication to the standard threading procedure, but the only thing I'm doing differently than I otherwise would is that I'm feeding in with the cross slide, and I'm not feeding the tool at an angle with the compound slide as you would normally do with conventional threads. 
I'm just having to keep track of where my dial is and add the depth to it with every pass. This took a while, so long that I didn't even hear my camera shut off because of the battery. The thread depth is nearly an eighth inch off the radius, but it was really cool when the test fit actually worked. I drilled holes on the sides of the block for my tube fittings. These were the pathways for the air and coolant, much like with the two manifolds. And then I drilled some holes inside of the threaded hole to connect those pathways separately inside of the coolant bottle. You can see here some of the chatter I was talking about with that tool shape. Blind holes just kind of suck. Each side is tapped for 8th inch connections for the tubing. And then I also drilled and tapped some holes on the back of the block to mount it to the mill. I cut a piece of tubing to act as the inner straw for the coolant and epoxied it into place. I used a transfer punch in the bottom of that hole to keep the tubing from, well, from bottoming out. It's coated with just a little bit of oil to avoid the epoxy. I was able to put the o-ring into place. It stayed nice and snug. I may try a different kind of o-ring. This is literally something out of the bin at the hardware store, and I don't know if it's designed for such an application. Anyway, that's my take on two different ways to take a simple project and make it more complicated than it's probably worth. If you liked this, hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram, and if you like early access videos and supporter-only content, you can support me directly on Patreon. Anyway, thanks for watching.